Hello everyone, welcome to Liam's Lyceum, I'm your host Liam, aka Hembar, and I'm doing my weekly update, this is Liam's Leaping number 95, for the 3rd of August, 2024. I'm going to try to get through this quickly, I mean, I read a decent amount this week, but first off, the things I finished, so I finished The Forest of Silence, uh, I think it's by Emily Rada or something like that, um, this is a, a younger, like a middle grade novel maybe, uh, first of seven in a series, there are two more series following it, this is the del toro series um i had one of these books from the third series like the second book from the third series i think shadow gate or whatever when i was much younger i thought it looked really cool i got it from like a scholastic book fair and i but i didn't read it because i knew it wasn't book one in a series i never ended up getting those and i was like hey now i have kids they're not quite at this reading level yet but i could read it and see if they will enjoy it later and i did enjoy this actually um i mean it's a kid's novel so i don't know what a kid would think of it you know but I enjoyed it well enough. I think a kid would enjoy it. So, um, Forest of Silence, again, I, I don't have a physical copy. I just read it on Kindle. So, But maybe I'll get a physical copy for it. Another book uh, I finished uh, that I don't have physically is Queen of the Martian Catacombs, which was expanded into a novel, I think, something of Sinharat or whatever. This is by Lee Brackett. Uh, it's the third Lee Brackett book I've read. Uh, it's a novella. Um, uh, it's Eric John Stark. It's the first Eric John Stark uh, novella, actually, so it takes place on Mars. Um, worth reading, Lee Brackett, for those unaware, is, uh, she wrote an early draft of Empire Strikes Back. That's probably her biggest claim to fame, I guess you could say. But I've read uh, Black Amazon and Mars by her, which I really enjoyed, and The Sword of Riona, which I really enjoyed. I probably enjoyed this one the least out of the three, but still, it's worth, worth the time. It's Sword and Planet in the variety of, you know, Edgar Rice Burroughs um, is uh, John Carter stuff, his Barsoom stuff. I also finished uh, Wind Rider's Oath by David Weber. Uh, definitely the slowest of the three. Uh, I, I've heard that Weber gets um, more wordy and, and slow, to, harder to get through. Um, the older he gets, I guess. And you're definitely definitely starting to see that in this one. Um, the first two books I felt were a lot better paced. Um, I don't have the fourth or fifth books. The fifth book does sound interesting. I hear the fourth book is okay in the latter half, but it's just kind of long. Like, this one's also longer than the first and second books. So, um, this one's a bit more epic fantasy rather than heroic fantasy. We got our main character, Basel, doesn't get a ton of attention. We get a lot of attention on Kreetha and some on Liana um, and other characters. Um, but Basel and Brandark are there, but they don't get a ton of attention. Um, so, uh, but I did enjoy it. Um, it just was easily the least favorite of the series so far. I think I'll read Oath or Sword Brother next and then maybe I'll get to uh I think it's War War Mage Choice, I think, is what book number four is. But I don't have a copy, like I said. Um but uh, book five I hear is pretty good, so we'll see. We'll see if any more of those come out. Uh technically we'll see. So um I also finished Dagger by David Drake, so another David, but a different one. My first novel I read by Drake actually. Um I've read one short story by him and Tales from the Gold Unicorn. It's very interesting. It's Thieves World novel, if you can tell. Uh, divided into three parts. Uh, very different, each section. Uh, not my not not a favorite by any means, but it was fine. Um, I definitely enjoyed my time, just didn't love it. Uh, part two is probably my favorite. Part three is the weirdest one. Part one is in Sanctuary, which is the place we're used to and reading Thieves World stuff. So, um, but yeah, very interesting. Uh, very much, if you like Egypt stuff, you get a big section on like Egyptian vibes, essentially. It's not Egypt, fantasy Egypt, was you know, pretty much the same thing. Um, and then, let's see, I think those are the four books I finished. So, um, before I get into the books I am reading, I did get two books this week. I got uh, Saints of Derbyshire uh, by Simon J. Taylor and uh, Josephine Simister. Um, Simon Taylor, I believe, is a priest or something. <laughs> and Joe is um, an artist. Uh, it seems somewhat of a local historian. I got a little postcard because this I I, I watched a Facebook Live event, uh, like February maybe of 2023, and this there was the book they were talking about. You can get this at Darby Cathedral, um, and they they had like a thing on their website for post. The postage is like four pounds or whatever. I was like, how about how much would it cost to send it to the United States? Probably the only copy in the United States. Um, not like super academic focused, but it's very interesting still. It's actually almost more of a travel thing. It's a touristy thing, right? Um, but it's still very interesting. And it does have some nice, it does really focus on the artwork um, of these locations, uh, which I think is pretty cool. 
it needs. And also some of the artwork is um, Joe's, right? So pretty interesting stuff. It also has some prayers in here and stuff. And so the, very interesting, I think. Um, the opening is from the Bishop of Darby, I think. Libby, Libby Lane. So uh, very interesting to get that. Um, I also got this little thing from this like presentation um, gallery type thing um, of these prints uh, that was done at the Darby Cathedral a few years ago. So that was very nice. Very nice of Joe to send this to me. That took a took a while. I've been talking to her about it for months since early this year. And so I finally got it this week. The other book I got, which I got today, I haven't had a chance to look through it because uh, I've been at work all day. Um, but something to go with, um, hopefully, my reading of uh, Weird Tales of Modernity by Jason Ray Carney is Black Pulp, Genre Fiction in the Shadow of Jim Crow by Brooks E. Hefner. Hefner, I wonder if he's related to Hugh. i got a family relation kind of there. Anyways, so um, University of Minnesota Press, uh, I don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm looking forward to reading it. Uh, I think I might read this one with my pal Tim. Um but uh, I, and it's not very long. Uh, and a lot of the stuff at the back is also, you know, notes and citations and stuff. So, um, yeah, 168 is where the notes start. So, and the first citation is really Scott's The Martian. So, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, uh, other books I've been reading, I have a few over here that are physical, but let's try to get through the ones that aren't physical yet. Um, Pages of Pain by Troy Denning. Um, I'm trying to read a novel from every setting. I think I mentioned this a few weeks ago of, of Dungeons and Dragons, and I'm pretty close uh, to finishing um, these novels. Uh, the, all these, uh, not every setting has novels, and some settings have, like Forgotten Realms has the most, for example, uh, and maybe maybe Planescape has the least actually. So, I, Pages of Pain is a Planescape novel by Troy Denning. I'm actually kind of impressed by it. It's really mythic. I do think maybe it's a little long with how the idea works. I think it would work better as a novella. Um, but it's about normal D and D novels. I don't have a physical copy, but you know, so that. Uh, these are the, the these are the only two settings I have left. Once I finish Pages of Pain, I'll have Birthright and um and Eberron. So, um. Anyways, um, I'm surprised, like how well he does this uh, Lady of Pain part, this immortal lady who rules the city, you know, she's on the logo of Planescape. I'm really surprised with how well he does that part um, in this character. Very mythic, very Greek mythic, if you're classical oriented person, you'll recognize a lot of stuff that's going on before it's really revealed to you. But uh, um, And you get to learn the city of Sigil, um, and I, I'm not familiar with it really at all. I mean, I have a general idea, so, but yeah. Anyways, that, that's an interesting one. I'm not quite done with it, but I'm very, very close to finishing it. Um, another one that I'm really close to finishing is The Dealings of Daniel Keserich, which is one of Fritz Leiber's first works um, from 1936, but it wasn't published until after he died in 1997. Uh, it's very, very Lovecraftian. Doesn't have a lot of the flair and style that Leiber is generally known for. I'm not sure if he wrote this before or after he started talking to Lovecraft. Um, 1936 is, six is the year he started his correspondence with Lovecraft shortly before Lovecraft died in 37. Um, but again, I don't know when this novella, maybe is a better term for it, was written. A very Lovecraftian. You you get some hints of library, and I'll talk about that in my review in several months, you know, but um, it, it, it's not bad. It's not bad. I enjoyed it. Um, we also have Among the Grey Lords by DJ Butler. A little over 100 pages in this one. I don't have it physically. I meant to get a copy from Dave last time I saw him back in February, but I didn't get one. So I'm reading it on my uh, phone. And uh, it's about time. I was realizing that I'd recently read Shadow of the Smoky Mountain by Howard Andrew Jones. And then I was like, oh, and there's another Bane like pre-release that comes out next week. And that's uh, Graveyard of Demons by Larry Correa. And I was like, oh, I should read among the Grey Lords, because I really enjoy Androgyn and Fix, and I, I've talked about them a ton on my channel, actually, about how I go out of my way to get Androgyn and Fix short stories. This one is a novel, as opposed to the last Androgyn and Fix book, which was Between Princesses and Other Jobs, which is more of a fix-up anthology or a collection type of thing. Um, but So it kind of depends if you want a novel and the Palace of Shadow and Joy is a good place to start. Um, if you want the short stories, you can start with Between Princesses and Other, jo uh, and other Jobs. Um, so, but I am enjoying Among the Great Lords. It's funny, man. I, I I read a page of it the other day, and I was like, "There's this is a really silly metaphor." And then the, one of the characters afterwards, like, "That was an unexpected metaphor." And I'm just like, "That's totally Dave's humor," but it's actually thinking funny. Um, anyways, jeez, uh, I think that's all the ones I have digitally going. Oh, 
I still have my copy of He Rules Who Can. I've been going really slowly through that one, but it is over there. I have a copy of it. It's just by my bed. Um, and I am enjoying it. I just, I've actually done very little physical reading. So even these ones that I, I'm going to show you here in a minute that I have physically, I've actually been doing digitally for the most part. Um, very little physical reading in the past, well, really a couple months. I haven't done much. Um, so the next ones are Seventies, which I was about halfway through last week. I'm really close to finishing it. I might finish it tonight, actually. So uh, I am enjoying it. Uh, not a lot, actually. I enjoyed um, uh, Snow Crash much, much more. Uh, in fact, if I were to read, if I were to suggest of the two Neil Stevenson books I've read, this and Snow Crash, this is a um, a bigger idea sci-fi, which is not as entertaining. Um, Snow Crash is really fun. I really enjoyed Snow Crash. So this isn't bad, though. It's just kind of middling. Um, and I'm also about 300, oh, not quite 300 pages, I don't think. 300 pages, maybe almost into the Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. Uh, thanks to my pal, um, Jerry, who got this for me, I believe, last year. I believe it was late last year. And uh, it's it's enjoyable, actually. So what's funny about it is I would say, like, I'm enjoying it, but it makes me cringe a lot. Like, it's really cringe. It's super edgy. Um I don't think it's as cool as it thinks it is, but it's still enjoyable. I mean, it's really predictable and generic in a lot of ways, and that's kind of what you expect from vampires. I just like vampires, and so I'm enjoying it. Uh, it's got these story beats, and he, he even though, oh, this is going to happen next because I know how fantasy stories work, and it happens, he still writes it well enough where it's enjoyable, all right? So I mean, that, that's kind of my thing. It's kind of middling, too, because it's an enjoyable story, but it's, it's, I don't know, I hate to use the word cringe, but it's cringe is just one of the words for it, man. Um, I don't know if Empire of the Damned is any better, but uh, like I said, and it's not bad. I mean, I'm getting through it. 300 pages is not bad. So I read most of that in the past couple days. Um, I think the last book here actually is The Elf Queen of Shannara. Um, again, I've been reading it digitally, so I'm a little further than this, actually. I'm really close to finishing this one. Um, I'm enjoying it, actually. This one, Rin didn't get like any attention in the last El um, Shannara book. This is mostly her book in this one. Um, and I'm enjoying it. And after I have finished this, I'll only have one more in the Heritage of Shannara. And that'll be the second Shannara series finished, finally. And then I'll have the standalone, the first King of Shannara. And then after that, I would probably need to get more books. Because I don't even remember which one comes, which series comes after that. I do have, like, one more Shannara book. But I think it's from a later series. So I just found, like, really cheap. So I decided to get it at the time. So Shannara is one I've been going through really slowly. Um, for those unaware, I, I DNF'd, actually, the Sword of Shannara. Way back in like 2017 or 2018, something like that. I'm not entirely sure. But then I decided I should try Elf Stones of Shannara uh, at the very end of 2020, I think it was. I think it was I think it was the last book I finished in 2020. Uh, I remember getting it for Christmas, and I read it really quickly. I really enjoyed Elf Stones. Um, I did not enjoy Sword of Shannara at all, obviously. Um, but Elf Stones was really good. Um, it's still my favorites. Wish Song was okay. And this series has been okay so far as well. I mean, it does rehash, a, a, I mean, like, it's really similar in a lot of ways, kind of the same beats, but it does have different themes, I would say, kind of touches on. Um, but maybe not. It's also been a minute since I've read the other Shannara books, so they all feel like Shannara to me. Uh, I don't think Terry Brooks is a bad author. I just don't think he's great. <laughs> so, but I do look forward to reading more Shannara again, like I said. I'll finish this one soon. I've enjoyed it, uh, and hopefully I'll read uh, Talisman this year relatively soon, I guess. It's been it's been about a year, I think, since I read Um Druid? Is it Druid last year? I don't remember what it is. So whatever book two in Heritage Shinar is. So anyways, it's been a good reading week. Um, I'm going to actually go probably try to finish up some of these books now. Um, maybe just start Black Pulp. Who knows? There's too many <laughs> there's too many books to read. So, um, But anyways, uh, let me know what you've been up to. Let me know what you've read. Uh, my last few weekly updates have not really been popular at all. Um, I, think, I think T commented on my last one. Um, and then I don't think I got any comments on the one before that. Um, Part of me feels like a monthly update would be more popular, but at the same time, it would just be too long. I read too much in a month. I don't want to make a video that long. I don't like sitting in front of the camera that long. So, well, I mean, I do it for other things, but not for, for an update, which I find boring personally, but something I feel like I should do because I'm on booktube or something. Anyways, uh, hope, and also I came out with my uh, <laughs> sneaking video about tabletop role-playing games, which is not really my audience, so it hasn't done very well. But if you're curious... Um, it was fun time talking with my brothers on my Wednesday video. So anyways, I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Do the best.